morning folks so I'm in the woods this is where I'm going to build my camp I'm actually on top of a quite a, a, a small kind of you wouldn't call it hill but it's like a ridge so if I just show you down there there's a steep drop and there's a steep drop as you can see it's all sloping downhill steep drop steep drop steep drop there's some lakes in the distance nobody can see me as you can see you can't actually see the steep drop. You can't see the ground. And there's a steep drop all the way down there. And then just if you look at the tip of my finger, there's a steep drop. So there's like a valley and then it rises up. The ground rises up again. Um, and then up this way, it's uphill, uphill, uphill. And there's no pathway for a long, long way. So this is, this is probably the most secluded spot that I can find because it's a public woodland. Um, obviously, I'm not doing any damage here. I don't use anything that's growing. I don't cut up anything that's growing. Just using deadfall to build a camp and have some fun. But um, I don't really want to be out here disturbed by people because the whole reason I come to the woods is for peace and quiet. So this is pretty cool. So I'm going to call this Ridgetop Camp 1. Um, as you can see, there's tons of deadfall wood for me to use and the other thing of course that you have to remember is it does feel a little bit exposed but that's because we're in winter it's nearly March so spring's on its way but you imagine like in a couple of months all these trees it's going to be green and there's going to be leaves in all the trees so there is let me just go around again there is a gap sort of through there and there's some fishing lakes in the distance and there is a pathway you can't actually see the path, but it's just underneath at the bottom of the slope. There is a pathway, but um, I have been down on the path and looked up here and you can't see anything up here. But just imagine when all the leaves are on the trees, that's going to be completely covered. That gap you see between these two trees here, this dead tree and here, there's quite a large gap and that's where the pathway is right at the bottom. But all the stuff that's growing, it's going to grow, it's going to go green, it's going to cover everything. Also, the ground around here is covered in dead bracken. It's like everywhere, dead bracken everywhere, which means, of course, as soon as the warmer weather comes, the bracken is going to grow up again. So in this gap, that is, that's the most exposed part of my camp at the moment. But in this gap, there's going to be lots of green leaves and branches, and also the bracken is going to grow. So once I'm up here, and obviously I've got to be careful I've got to find an exit point as well because obviously I want to keep the camp secluded so you don't want to be coming in and out of the camp every time you come because obviously you're going to tread a path and if someone's walking their dog or whatever they might see a fresh path and think oh I wonder what's up there there's a pathway so so yeah this is my campsite now what I've decided to do I don't know if you can sorry guys this is really quite awkward there's a tree here and a tree here and that's where I'm going to attach my initial roof support so I'll put a roof support there then I'm going to just put wood the other side slanting down and that'll be my initial shelter problem is there's this huge dead out of the ground birch here see it goes all the way across um, now it's right in the way of the entrance of my camp in fact it's actually pushing up against that tree, which is the one that I'm going to use for my initial roof support. So that's got to come down. So I've got my trusty, trusty little saw. My dad bought me this about four years ago for, I think it was like $3.99 from B&Q. And you might think it's not that good for that price, but I've been using it solidly in the garden and in the woods and it's still razor sharp. So. Um, the, the only downside to the saw is the colour. It's a bit visible, but uh, I, I keep meaning um, I might try and sort of colour it, colour it in with some marker, green marker pen or something, and then maybe wrap some paracord around here just to disguise it. Anyway, so as you can see, I've made a start on cutting this, uh, cutting this big uh, birch down. Don't worry, folks. Um, the birch is dead. Um, 
you can see just over there the roots they're right up out the ground once i've got that birch tree down what i want to do is just leave it on the ground i'm gonna to have to obviously clear the ground because there's more deadfall um because i think this this dead birch i can actually use that within the shelter as the first sort of piece of wood for a raised bed or a raised seat so obviously i don't want to be sitting on the ground so if i can cut it there and drop it to the ground now I can push it up against the two trees that are going to act as the main support for the roof and then that can be the beginning of a, of a seat, a raised seat. Yeah, if you look beyond here, there's a really cool space. And also the other thing is, there's this tree here, I'm going to build a wall to shut this end off. And then I can build a wall from here to here to shut this end off. Um, and then I'm not really sure because I want to close, well, there's plenty of wood here, so I can close this end off right where I'm standing. There's my kit. I've just got my tarp and some a cooking set and all that stuff. So, yeah, should be able to... My aim is to create a camp where I've basically closed everything off so there'll be walls 360 degrees around the edge of the camp. There's so much wood, it's, it's not a problem. Biggest problem is going to be you can't really see but let me let me tilt the camera i don't know if you can tell you can't really tell the ground is is quite sloping here so once i've built my camp obviously i'm going to build the camp straight i'm um, in the trees and not slope it once i've built the camp what i'm going to do to put my raised bed in i'm going to have to dig a little bit of the ground out just to make it a bit more level um or of course I could just pile up an extra couple of bits of wood at one end, which would probably be a better idea, but I want to try and clear some of the ground, so so that'll be interesting. Anyway, so that's it. It's uh, day one at the camp. I'm calling it the Ridge Top Camp. I'm going to get on with trying to cut this birch down. It's going to be a hell of an effort, because although this saw is really good, um, this wood is incredibly wet. So actually I've been I've been cutting it from underneath, which is working. And it has been cracking, so it is coming down. I don't know if you can see this. Sorry, I, I forgot to mention. I did post this on my Instagram last week, by the way. For those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, I'm putting a lot of bushcraft photos there. So go to Vegan Mark on Instagram. But you can see all this fungus. I uh, took a photograph and asked people on Instagram. There's tons of it everywhere to identify it. And a kind gentleman did identify it. I forget its name now, but it's a fungus that has lots of... Um, antibacterial and antiseptic properties and I, I've done some research and if you take this fungus and you cut a tiny tiny little slither of it off um, if you get cuts I've got quite a few cuts in my hands if you get cuts and stuff um, if you lay that fungus on your cut it's actually like a natural antiseptic plaster I've also read um, that you can if you dry it out it will also take a spark as tinder so before I leave, I'm going to pick some of that fungus, take it home, dry it. It also says you can eat it, but I'm not going to risk that just in case because I'm not 100% confident, obviously. I don't know for certain. Um, so, yeah, it's just everywhere because the woods is so much birch. Birch bark for firelighting. There'll be plenty of birch sap for tapping. But, yeah, look at it. It's everywhere, this fungus. So I'm going to pick some of that before I leave and uh, dry it and... and uh, See if it takes a spark, and um, I'll probably make a video about it. So yeah, guys, um, this is Ridge Camp. I'm really excited to see what I can do. Uh, I've never really built a sort of semi-permanent camp, so it's going to be interesting learning for me. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. I've got some exciting projects. I'm in the process of making my own... Um, meth stove i did have a trangia stove but i can't find it anywhere i think it might have got thrown out when i moved so i decided to make my own um and it's basically going to cost me about one pound fifty to make it so i'm excited about that and uh see you all again soon cheers thank you very much for watching